Hello and welcome back to another guide for War Tales. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our class guides. This is going to be the class guide for the Archer and I'm trying to jam everything into a 10 minute no BS, no repetition, very condensed information video to make the most out of this class. The Archer is a ranged character. Matter of fact, the only true ranged character. As such, quite squishy compared to other characters can only wear light armor but would be the closest towards a crowd controller and a damage dealer in one package uh, what they are lacking in defense they are more than overcompensating by a really great uh, set of skills three out of the four uh, builds are um, serviceable. Hunter Beast Master and Infantrymen are very good. I think the Marksman still needs a little bit more adjustment as it is too Valor Point intensive. I will focus on two builds uh, today in order to give you yet again another uh, set of options that you want to play along. And for the Archer Honorable Mansion, I will be going with the Hunter and Beastmaster build, but the honorable mention will be the Infantryman, uh, which is a zone controlling build. The reason why I don't want to go into detail into a zone controller in this guide is it requires a very specific setup of classes to work very well uh, together and a very specific playstyle where you are actually trying to make sure that the enemy is running into your control zone, then you trigger attacks of opportunity, and then it's somewhat worth uh, the effort. The other two, however, Beastmaster and Hunter are more straightforward and therefore I would uh, recommend them specifically for newer players. So the Archer as such is uh, a uh, ve uh, Valor Neutral or Valor Spending class. I like to use them as a Valor Spender because they can just deal a lot of damage. Um, the tanks and the spearmen in my formations tend to generate the Valor whilst uh, the Archer uh, melee DPS and Ranger are typically spending uh, the Valor. I have uh, gone very well in the Archer with Valor support. We're starting with uh, the, uh, in my perspective, cookie cutter build, uh, the kind of gold standard for an Archer, which would be the Hunter build. Ultra strong build, very, very strong and crowd controlling. And if you play your cards right, that build alone can win you entire fights. So that is how strong the build is. I start off with Valor's Victory, which gains you one Valor for every killed unit. Uh, with a Hunter build, you have two shots, your normal shot and the Hunter shot every single round, which at least should net you one kill, specifically on weaker units. With Aim, you can go very far, albeit just for one uh, shot per round. Hunter itself allows you to have a recall shot that slows the target, the upgraded version slows for two rounds and that per definition is already a fantastic option. Oftentimes when reinforcements are coming or you're seeing someone on a flank that wants to move into your backline, recall shot, specifically the upgraded one and later even with a bell trinket that doubles the knockback range uh, will mean that that character is out for maybe even two complete rounds and you don't need to ca uh, care about them until uh, uh, such time. You can shoot people into mud, uh, you can shoot people into difficult terrain, into fire, matter of fact uh, everywhere uh, you want. You can even use that as a setup to then use AOE attacks for your melee guys. The uh, possibilities are endless and I personally thoroughly enjoy it and would highly recommend that build. Uh, that build goes nicely together with either um, reinforced arrows, which trigger bleed, uh, if you are using a ranger that has assassination or use status effects in other uh, senses, or precision, which applies vulnerability very regularly. So that means you just increase your uh, up your damage independently. So either way works. Um, in my playthrough, I've uh, used uh, reinforced arrows with an um, penetrating bow that shoots through multiple um, enemies and then uh, followed up with an assassin that used the bleeding f um, for their purpose. It is a great um, option but equally uh, precision works uh, just as well. Then in terms of uh, the next uh, tier, we're going with Thrill of the Hunt, everything uh, more than eight meters, which is kind of at the edge of your uh, your range, will create one rage. Uh, the upgraded version creates two rage for crits, uh, which then has a stackable buff 5% per rage stack. 
Um, typically, I ended with like six, seven, sometimes eight uh, rage. But as the um, combat goes on, the rage uh, stacks can continue to grow, and you're creating monstrously high crits later in the game. Um, then into Lone Wolf, as the ranger is potentially a one of the few characters that can really truly benefit from that five meter uh, distance to other. Move away, shoot uh, once or twice, and then move back into radius um, is an incredibly uh, strong potential. As for the level 12 abilities, I cannot speak highly enough of suppressive fire. I think besides the swordsman ability, this is the best uh, bravery option. It is a massive cone of fire uh, that will slow down everyone in the round. Mind you, it also then triggers Thrill of the Hunt for every single enemy that you have hit. I oftentimes hit six, seven, eight, sometimes ten enemies at once. Uh, massive rage stacks in that case if, um, if you're going uh, with that bravery. And that then transitions into even more damage for your normal attacks. So ultra good. I would highly recommend that. If you are running um, low on bravery slots, so you have just too many uh, characters, class uh, specialization into uh, either precision or reinforced arrows, whatever you have taken would be the right call. In terms of uh, attributes, we want to see 15 willpower at least. Then we want to go for, let's say, um, 14 to 16 uh, movement um, to make sure that uh, the ranger can go f uh, far enough and the rest goes uh, straight into critical hit as the ranger benefits a lot from that. So very straightforward build. The hunter itself is great. Um, slight adaptation will be with the beastmaster that functions just a tiny bit different, but the hunter itself super good uh, build. Which brings us to the second build, the Beastmaster build, which is an equivalently good but yet very distinct build for the Archer. The uh, Beastmaster build uh, revolves around beasts, so fair warning, you will need an animal companion in order to make use of this build. In order to get an animal companion, you want to get yourself ropes, which can be created by the Tinker. You want to engage any animal of your liking. You want to reduce it to 50% or lower health. And then you want to have a second character essentially flanking it and using the ropes in order to capture said animal. The lower the hit points, the higher the chance of capturing it. That is vital, elsewise the Beastmaster build is really not doing much. Now, the Beastmaster build will be a little bit more supportive in nature uh, than the Hunter build, um, but it can be equally strong. And the Beastmaster build, therefore, I uh, would say starts with Valorous support instead of uh, Valorous victory. You can pull it off with Valorous victory, but I personally like to get more Valor out of the build. And with Valorous support, it kind of in minimum pays for itself, oftentimes is even Valor positive. So you're, we're starting with Valorous support. We're then moving into Beastmaster. And Beastmaster really lets all of the... Uh, mm, uh, animal companions that are adjacent to a target that you select attack that target. Mind you, it is not all of the uh, animal companions attack someone random. You pick one target and any beast that is adjacent to it then attacks. So in reality, um, you will oftentimes get one attack, sometimes two or three, depending on how many um, animal companions you are running. I personally like Beastmaster and I like to run one or two animal companions, don't want to go overboard with it, but it can be a very strong skill and if you're having multiple frontline tanks, then um, which are animal companions, then uh, that can be quite helpful. I would suggest getting yourself a bear or a wolf in the current state of the game, bear more tanky, wolf more alpha strike glass cannon and uh, then use Beastmaster with that. The huge advantage of Beastmaster is Beast Mastery as a level 5 uh, skill. The Archer is the only class that can allow you to um, effectively control animals and that multiplies and manifolds their usefulness. So we're going with Beast Mastery, the upgraded version, gives them inspiration um, and that means in the first round uh, they can definitely reach the target. We're going with Thrill of the Hunt just like with the other build because Rage is too good to pass it um, off and it will be incredibly helpful. So we're going with that since 
Um, I build it as a Valorous support build. You don't want to go to Lone Wolf, but instead take Anticipation. You want to stand near the back line. And just in case someone uh, tries to engage you, there is a 50% chance that you are shooting him in the knee instead. For level 12, we're going with Suppressive Fire, just like with the other build. Uh, if for whatever reason you don't want to take that, uh, class specialization into Precision is an equally good option. So that's the Beastmaster in a sense. And we're now going to see some gameplay footage. Which brings us to the gameplay section of the Archer build. Today we're running a Beastmaster uh, first. This Beastmaster here is a level 11 Beastmaster with basic equipment. We have cra self crafted an Arcadian bow as well as the light armor. We're running a very basic uh, projectile trinket. Nothing out of the ordinary. I wanted to pick something that is as basic as possible. And we're fighting against much, much stronger opponents. We're looking at level 14 enemies here, where we are effectively uh, quite under leveled. Now we have our situation where we got ourselves uh, a polar bear that is already in uh, direct uh, fight with the lieutenant. And we're seeing a flank over here. Now, in order to showcase uh, the power of uh, that build, I just wanted to, uh, to highlight a couple of the options that we can uh, go with. Let's start uh, with uh, doing what we wanted to do in the first place. We are far enough away uh, to use the polar bear in order to uh, give it fury and remove most of uh, the armor. You can uh, see uh, more though 25% uh, uh, guard was there. We're looking at almost 300 points of damage just uh, by that skill alone, which is awesome. A wonderful, wonderful, wonderful skill. We're moving up uh, to uh, be in the back line here. If you stay directly behind uh, one of your companions, there's a 0% chance that you are going to hit it. Um, so we can simply go through and uh, hit uh, the character swiftness oil is proccing if that character was lower and i would feel more adventurous i could even um, sprint in and uh, then do wrath mind you wrath is not taking the bow damage but the melee damage is still very good and typically uh, you can get low targets completely down i would only do that if i would really be sure uh, to take him down the other option that i could do is take first aid uh, Robier has taken a bit of damage but i think he's going to be overall fine so that's potentially for the next uh, turns we're going to be fine here i would uh, again in the next turns move away take a couple a couple of shots move back it's really straightforward as a build and as long as you and your animal companion are in unity that's all that counts there is an additional bow that would uh, uh, synergize well with that build which allows you after hitting that uh, your animal companion would hit an additional time with that i would have potentially killed this lieutenant but like uh, we're running currently just base equipment and uh, with just one rotation of abilities this guy is close to death not quite there but pretty close to death which is absolutely good for a damage dealing slash supporting build we're ending the turn by regaining uh, by automatically healing our pet uh, due to our upgraded beast mastery skill and also gaining a valor so it's a valor positive uh, in the end all right, some more gameplay of uh, the Archer. This time we are rocking the Hunter build that I talked about earlier, which is crowd controlling. And I want to show you this particular footage as uh, we are again fighting in a highly overleveled enemy. The flank here could be open. This enemy could be pushing right into our side. And essentially what we're going to do is I will um, show how to use a recoil shot and specifically the upgraded one uh, with uh, further recoil and movement reduction appropriately. So we do have Lone Wolf. Unfortunately, we can't uh, passively click Lone Wolf to uh, show the distance, but you do have Sprint as an approximation. So that is more or less five meters, which means if we are moving up to here, you see that Lone Wolf uh, triggers. Now, we want to make sure that this guy here is not going to harass us. 
I have not loaded the trinket for double pushback, but single pushback here should be more than enough. Keep in mind, this was a wonderful crit that we have scored, and this foot soldier will be out of commission for now. If you are uh, shooting straight, by the way, there is also no uh, chance of hitting your comrades. We're still in lone wolf range, so we're uh, taking further shots. Not only removing the guard of the defender here, but also making them vulnerable. So next turn, this guy will definitely die. In order to uh, keep our safe distance, we're just staying here. And that's really it. We're going to see a bit more from the next round. So the next round is on and we can see massive reinforcements are coming from this side. If we were already level 12, uh, we could slow all of them down. In absence of that being the case, what we can do is we can nonetheless push them back. We're running low on, uh, on uh, Valor in this particular case. So we really need to make sure that we can get a couple of kills refresh the Valor so that is that and uh, this here would barely get us into range but equally bring us into lone wolf so you can see nicely five meters distance either side and there's the extra kill very strong the archer itself even if he wouldn't have killed he would have pushed it uh, back I highly recommend as uh, an archer uh, to get the belt, uh, as the hunter to get the belt that pushes back twice as far. Uh, it will just render melee um, useless uh, or one melee useless because they continuously will be pushed back. So very strong core uh, crowd control. I hope you enjoyed what uh, you've seen from the archer playthrough. Thanks a lot for watching guys uh, and if you have a bullseye archery skill and try to snipe that like button and of course let me know how you like to build your archer down below thanks for watching bye bye